Yo guys, this is Real American Studios here, and yes, I'm bringing you guys a WWE uh, video. And today, I'm going to be going over my WWE Fastlane predictions for 2019, how I would book WrestleMania 35, and uh, five too early dr possible dream matches for WrestleMania 36 that I would like to see at WrestleMania 36, obviously. So, <clears throat> with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the description below and if you are a WWE fan. And also, um, you know, uh, shit, what was I going to, oh yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, both are linked in the description below. Uh, obviously, I, the Twitch experiment failed, so Twitch is a no-go anymore, so uh, but yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and join my Discord, all are linked down in the description below, and also, um, you know, like, let me know how you would book WrestleMania 35, and, or any dream matches you have for next year's WrestleMania, or, you know, anything like that, but yeah, um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get in, and we're going to start off with the WWE Fastlane predictions, so I'm on a website, that could like CBS Sports with WWE. So I'm here on a website, and so far this is what it's got down. I think this was updated, like it's up to the latest date. But apparently, Rey Mysterio versus Andrade is on the kickoff show, and that's really unfortunate because these guys are capable of putting on great, great matches. But according to this, it's the only uh, kickoff show match. So. Potentially, these guys could get 15, 20 minutes to duke it out. And obviously, I think Rey Mysterio is going to win. Um, I would like Andrade to win because I think Andrade should be starting to like be built as a superstar. But at this point, he's a victim of that 50-50 booking WWE likes to do. So I think Rey Mysterio is going to win the match. And uh, next up, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match. The Revival versus Lester Black and Ricochet versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. And uh, I don't see any reason to change it. I think the Revival should win. I think uh, either Roode or Gable should eat the pin. I don't want uh, Black or Ricochet to eat the pin. But I also don't feel like they're ready to give up the tag team titles. And let the Revival carry the title. They deserve it. They're a very good tag team. Uh, <clears throat> next up, we have... The Women's Tag Team Championships, uh, Boston Hug Connection versus Nia Jax and Tamina. I think Boston Hug Connection is going to retain. They just won the titles at Elimination Chamber. There's no point in letting them lose the titles now. So, I mean, yeah. Next up, we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, the Usos versus The Miz and Shane McMahon. I think the Usos are going to win, and I also think Miz turns on Shane at the end of the match because Shane's the one that gets pinned. So, yes, I, I believe that will happen. Um, you know, like, the Miz as a heel, he, he needs to go back to being a heel. He's a great heel, and I think it's time to start building him up to, a, like, a main event status on SmackDown. So, and you'll see it in the WrestleMania 35 predictions. I'm, I'm going to, like... You'll see everything that I want. Uh, well, it's not WrestleMania 35 predictions. It's how I would book this year's WrestleMania. Next up, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Asuka versus Mandy Rose. I mean, Mandy Rose has already pinned Asuka once on SmackDown. Asuka's not losing that title. It's pretty predictable. So Asuka retains. And also, you're going to see again at WrestleMania 35... You know, like, it's time to build Asuka to be a legitimate champion. Um, next up, we have The Shield versus Drew McIntyre, Bobby, uh, Cor Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley. Um, the Shield should win this match. Honestly, Reigns, Spears, Bobby Lashley, one, two, three, Shield wins. There's no reason The Shield should lose, unless it's some bullcrap. And... Obviously, we have Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. If Becky wins, it becomes a triple threat. If she loses, it's just Charlotte versus Rousey. Um, 
Becky Lynch. I'm giving it to Lynch. I want to see Lynch versus Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey, even though I'd much rather see just Becky versus Ronda on its own. But screw you, WWE. You got to throw Charlotte Flair in there. Come on, WWE. And last but not least, we have our WWE Championship match between Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens. I mean, I think Bryan wins, but it's off of an Eric Rowan or even a returning Luke Harper distraction. Distraction, so. Bryan wins, Bryan retains. Now, coming up next, we're going to have the WrestleMania 35. Um, like how I would book it. And... I mean, let's just get right into it. Starting off, obviously, on the kickoff show, we're going to have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Now, first, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. All right, so, Kofi, uh, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Kofi, I believe he should get his shot for the WWE title. And, you know, but in this scenario, I'm going to say that Every one of the members of New Day is going to have a shot at something. And in this case, Big E is in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, you know. And uh, later on, you'll just have to see where Xavier is and obviously Kofi in the WWE Championship match. But in this Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, all right, the match is down to the final four. Your final four are Big E, Cesaro, Aleister Black, and Braun Strowman. So Braun Strowman eliminates Cesaro. Um, Big E is close to eliminating a Lester Black. Unfortunately, a Lester Black ends up eliminating Big E. And then you have Strowman and a Lester Black. You give them. So obviously, Big E was close to winning the match, but he doesn't quite get it. It slips out of his fingers. So Braun and a Lester Black, you give them a good five or six minutes to fight, honestly. Like. And you tease a potential feud between these two guys, because I would like to see that. But in the end, Braun Strowman eliminates a Lester Black. Strowman gets the win. So Strowman wins his first Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And I think you should really use this to catapult Strowman to the top. Like, honestly, I, I want Strowman to be a top superstar in WWE. And this is how you start it. Um... You know, say you you have him maybe eliminate half the field out of this match. Like, imagine that. Imagine how much that makes Strowman look strong. And then continuing the pre-show, I believe there should be uh, two battle royals on this pre-show. But next up, we have the women's tag team championships. I say, you know, maybe you get a boss and hug connection versus uh, Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. You know, they kind of are, yeah, they kind of fight it out. And Boston Hug retains Sasha and Bailey. You know, or or you could have Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan use heel tactics to win. And Bailey turns on Sasha afterwards and we get heel Bailey. But I don't see them losing the tag team titles necessarily. They might want to save that match for SummerSlam. I would because... At this point, you've been building it up before that and never pull the trigger. So maybe fans are tired of it. So around that SummerSlam season, you started afresh. And last but not least, on the pre-show, uh, I'd have like a, a battle royal with all the cruiserweights in it. And in the end, you know, I'd give the um, I'd let Buddy Mur Murphy retain. Like this guy's just awesome as the. Uh, cruiserweight champion so buddy murphy retains now starting off the actual show is a ladder match for the united states champion if you missed smackdown last night samoa joe won the u.s championship so you already have four competitors i mean you have well I'll actually uh ray and andrade were just on the kickoff show so that actually well that was for fast lane though I'm a moron. So, yeah, you have Ray, Andrade, R-Truth, Samoa Joe. Xavier Woods is in this match. And, you know, obviously before this, New Day is hyped up. Like, we're going to have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner. We're going to have the United States champion. And we're going to have the WWE champion. 
So Xavier's in the match, and I'd add Mustafa Ali into the match. I mean, Mustafa's good. He's going to make this match more entertaining than it already is. And then at the end, say, um, let's say Samoa Joe puts Andrade through the announce table, and you know he destroys, uh, he destroys, you know Mustafa Ali. At the end, in the ring, you've got Xavier Woods climbing the ladder. He's close to winning the U.S. Championship. And Samoa Joe comes in the ring and he and he tips the ladder over. Xavier Woods goes flying and lands on Ray and R Truth. Samoa Joe climbs the ladder and retains the United States Championship. And at this point, you had Big E in the final three of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. He got eliminated by Lester Black. Xavier just got pushed off of the ladder when he had his fingertips on the U.S. title. So. Two, like New Day at this point, they're heartbroken. But, you know, Kofi has to remind them, hey, I've still got my chance. I'm going to bring a, I'm going to try my best to bring us glory. And let me tell you, like, you know, like, it, it'd just be a beautiful storyline at this point. Like, you've had two missed opportunities. Now everybody, Kofi's even more of an underdog than he already was because he's like, well, my two, my two New Day buddies could not get it done. You know, like, uh, everybody's saying, well, that's pretty much a sign Kofi's probably going to lose. I mean, uh, like, it's just like they're teasing us by having New Day finally get their dues, and then they, they just take it away from us. It's typical WWE. They don't listen to their fans. So, yeah, like, you can play into that storyline. Next up, all right, according to rumors, Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin are supposed to face off. I'm throwing that match out. Screw that match. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. And these guys, I'd say, give them a good 15 to 20 minutes to fight. Like, this could be a legitimately good match. And in the end, uh, you know, Corbin, Lashley, Elias, they all try to uh, distract Reigns. Dean and Seth come down. Well... No, I wouldn't have said. I'd say Dean comes down. He helps uh, Roman Reigns out. But the shield gets overpowered. Like, because it's only two on three. Rollins isn't out there. And you can build in the storyline. They're like, where, where were you, Rollins? Where were you, Rollins? And, you know, uh, in the end, Drew McIntyre hits the Claymore kick on uh, Reigns uh, off of distraction. McIntyre wins. McIntyre looks like a beast. Roman got his feet wet in the ring once again. And he did not. It doesn't hurt him because he lost on distractions and crap like that. So, you know. But, yeah. Like, they can play into, like, Seth, where were you, man? And, like, later on, you'll see the effects of this in the show. Um... But next up, we're going to have the tag team titles defended, the SmackDown tag titles. And we're going to have the Usos versus the Hardys. And we're going to give the Hardys the tag team titles because, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I kind of want the Hardys to win one more tag team titles at WrestleMania. I mean, you don't have to have them hold the belt for long. You can just have them win and give them their moment. And, you know, by, ne by 2020, they're probably going to be retired at that point, so... You know, consider it like a goodbye for the Hardys. You know, it'd be cool. It'd be, like, really cool to see that. So, yeah, the Hardys win their titles. Now, next up, all right, so this is a match that I seriously doubt's going to happen. But imagine if it did. And that match is Undertaker's annual WrestleMania match. And his opponent, AJ Styles. And here's what I'm thinking. So, AJ, he held on to the WWE title for so long, he calls SmackDown the house that he built. But AJ says there's one thing he hasn't accomplished yet, and that's defeating The Undertaker. Now, yes, I understand AJ and Randy are kind of in a storyline. I would like to save that match for WrestleMania. I'd like to give Randy Orton the uh, WWE Championship. So... AJ and Randy can fight for it at, at SummerSlam, is what I meant to say. So they can fight for it at SummerSlam. I feel like that match would be so much better with the title on the line. 
rather than just using it as like a basically like a just a normal match at WrestleMania. Like, I'd rather see that match with a storyline tied to it. And you know, Undertaker, I understand he's old, but remember, AJ Styles carried Jinder Mahal to a good match. I mean, Jinder Mahal, like Undertaker with a bad hip is better a better wrestler than Jinder Mahal on any day of the week. And remember, WrestleMania 33, Undertaker came into that match with a bad hip. Roman like kind of carried him to a halfway decent match at least, a respectable match. AJ can carry Undertaker to a good match even with, you know, 10 15 minutes to fight. And in the end, AJ Styles loses, but all right, so my storyline, it's going to be like Randy is playing mind games over the months. Randy ends up winning the WWE title at some point and under and uh, you know, AJ finally snaps, attacks Randy, they get the WWE title match at SummerSlam. It'd be a good storyline, but Randy distracts AJ in this match. Undertaker ends up hitting the tombstone. One, two, three, Undertaker wins, and I would make this Undertaker's last WrestleMania match. He goes out with a win. Now I understand AJ beating Undertaker would be like that would really cement AJ as that true star. But think about it. Randy cost him the match. This match doesn't hurt AJ Styles or his legacy. Randy cost him the match. And you can set up a good match afterwards. Because obviously Undertaker is not going to stick around for two or three pay-per-views after that to fight AJ again. You know, so. But, I mean, AJ obviously, oh, he says, you know, I have respect for Undertaker. I have no respect for Orton. You know, just imagine that. I mean, it's a good storyline. Now, next up, I would have the Raw Tag Team Titles be defended and I'd say maybe a tag team gauntlet match like Rude and Gable I would even have a DIY come back Gargano and Champa to fight for it and you know see it you know now that I think about it there's not really any great tag teams uh, on Smackdown is there like I, I'd have a uh, I mean heavy machinery still there right or Akira and Razam, or I, I can't remember. Like, you could add them in the match, but overall, I'd have the revival retain. I think the revival should go on for a while. I mean, these tag team titles need to be made relevant again, and why not like them to do it? And obviously, Rude and Gable can eat the pin again. <laughs> I mean, I understand I'm jobbing out Rude and Gable, but like, you know, I mean, what can you do? Alright, so next up, we're going to have, we're, we're going to have the, uh, we're going to have Miz and Shane McMahon. And in this match, I think this makes the most sense for this match, is to have the Miz absolutely destroy and humiliate Shane McMahon throughout the match. And Shane, maybe, maybe it looks like Shane's going to get a fluke roll-up win. Miz kicks out, and Miz ends up winning the match. So, yeah, Miz dominates and humiliates Shane McMahon. And at this point, Miz is, like, more of a heel than he's been his entire career. Like, instead of being uh, not only, like, that opportunistic coward heel, he's also, like, nasty against his opponents, too. Like, you know, and I feel like, you know, Miz is one of the best heels. Like, I mean... You know, he can be a monster heel. Like, obviously, he doesn't have that look as a monster heel, but, like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, a star heel. And I really want that for Miz. And I think Miz eventually deserves a, ta a WWE championship run as well. Because they need to give it to him. Um, all right, so next up, we're going to have the SmackDown Women's Championship match. And... We're just going to have Asuka and Naomi fight. But at this point, you know, it's kind of a friendly match. But during the match, you see Asuka start to turn more and more. Like, she's getting more fed up, more frustrated. And she just, she continues attacking Naomi. And 
she doesn't actually pin Naomi or make her tap out, make her submit. She beats Naomi to the point where the match has to be stopped. And at this point, Asuka is just, she, she looks relentless. Like, she looks like a true heel. And I think Asuka is a true heel champion. You know, eventually you can uh, debut Kairi Sane as a face to have her take the title of Asuka. And, because you understand Charlotte and Becky are, they're kind of gravitating more towards Raw. And in my opinion, that's where they belong. Because they're true stars. They belong on Raw. So that you can bring in fresh faces on SmackDown. At this point, you have Asuka as a monster heel. Kyrie Sane as a face. Naomi's still really good in the ring. Have her be a face. Like, she doesn't eat a pin. She doesn't get buried in this match. So, you see what I'm saying? And later on, Shayna Baszler as a monster heel as well. Like, you have the potential for a really good women's division on both shows. And I've even thought about it. What if you put the women's division on Raw and the tag division on SmackDown? That way, because Raw has a longer show, you can fit at least two women's matches into that three-hour show. And then on SmackDown, you can fit one tag match per week. Or, you know, I mean, it's just a thought, you know. Like, the tag divisions on SmackDown, the women's division on Raw. You know, I mean, it's just a thought there. But anyways, um, next up, you know, uh, we're getting more towards the end of the show. But I'm going to have the Intercontinental Championship match. I want Finn Balor versus Ricochet in the IC title match. And I want Ricochet to take that title off of Finn Balor. Because Ricochet, at this point, you've had time to build him up to look like an absolute star. You, you can build up Finn Balor a lot. You can make both of these guys look strong coming into this match and have them put on a strong, strong showing and Ricochet wins the title. You know, so obviously some of this match I'm going to go off like off of the real matches and some of them I'm making up like I'm doing like what I think should happen with the match. Some of these matches are already set. Like, obviously, I threw out Reigns and Corbin and ended up going with Reigns and McIntyre instead, which that would be much better. All right, so next up, all right, like I said, we're winding down in the show now. You know, we've had all these titles defended. All right, so next up, I'm going to have the WWE Championship match. Now, this is Kofi versus Bryan. And again, you're playing off the storyline that Big E and Xavier both were had their grasp on winning and could not get the job done. And during the match, you see Brian just kind of dominating. You know, he's like, he's taking it to Kofi. You know, Big E and Xavier's over there. They're cheering on Kofi, Rowan, and Harper on the other side. You know, obviously you have these guys try to get involved, like attacking each other, not involved in the match. But... Against all odds, Kofi, like Daniel Bryan, goes for a goes for a, a flying knee, and Kofi moves out of the way. Bryan gets caught on the ropes. You know, Kofi kind of delivers like a drop kick to his chest or something while he's like caught in the ropes, and then Kofi sets it up and hits the Trouble in Paradise. One, two, three. Kofi is the WWE champion. His first run with the title in his career. And honestly, as good as Kofi's had been in his career, I think a WWE Championship win over Daniel Bryan could solidify Kofi with a case to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Like, there's several people that got in that I don't even think deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Kofi deserves it, and he really solidifies it. Because, you know, he's been a U.S. champion, a tag team champion. He's been an Intercontinental champion. Now he's a WWE champion. That's plenty case to get in. Not to mention being in one of the best uh, factions that have been both heel and face at one point that did good as both. You know, you think about it, perfect. Like It's a perfect uh, legacy to submit your status as a Hall of Famer. Now, obviously, again, like I said, the show's winding down at this point. So next up, we have our triple threat match for the Raw Women's Championship. And we're going to have, obviously, uh, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte, 
Becky Lynch, and you give these three, like these three women tear the house down, the booking's absolutely perfect. All three women, they come up short, just short. But in the end, you have Charlotte, you know, she's mocking Becky Lynch. And, you know, Becky Lynch just snaps, she unloads on her. You know, Ronda Rousey, she gets up on the apron. Becky Lynch goes and drop kicks Rousey. She continues to destroy Charlotte, locks in to disarm her, and Charlotte taps. Becky becomes the champion. And, you know, you're also setting up the, uh, what is that? But, whatever, you, like, so according to it, Ronda's going to take time off. So now you have Becky and Charlotte. They're able to feud over the title. You know, and Becky holds on to that Raw Women's title for a very long time. And she deserves it at this point. It's just a back-to-back, back-to-back special moments. Kofi hoisting the title and Becky hoisting the title. Two perfect moments. Two people that absolutely deserve it. Like, if we're being completely and utterly honest, two people that absolutely deserve it. And they get to hoist that title at WrestleMania. Like, it just makes for a beautiful story. Now, next up, Triple H versus Batista. I think, uh, you know, I think with Ric Flair as a special referee, by the way, I think Ric ends up screwing Batista out of the win. Triple H ends up winning. But... Here is where, you know, obviously this is a, it, like, you can keep the storyline between Triple H and Batista going if Batista's here to stay. But here's the big point, because coming up next, we have the main event, Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar. And imagine, like, Brock Lesnar and the music hits as Batista's walking to the back, and they meet each other on the ramp and have a stare down, because... You're teasing a potential match between the two, which I would love to see at SummerSlam. Brock Lesnar versus Batista would be an awesome match to see. But Lesnar and Seth Rollins has become a street... No, I'm not going to do that. So Rollins and Lesnar, they're fighting. You know, and obviously Lesnar is dominating this match throughout. And, you know, you have longer than a five-minute match. Like, Lesnar is absolutely destroying Rollins throughout the match. And, you know, Rollins didn't run down and help Mac, uh, Reigns and Ambrose earlier. So, will they run down? And it doesn't look like it. But towards the end of the match, the music hits. Reigns and Ambrose, they come down. They get on e- either side of Lesnar on the apron. Lesnar distracted. Rollins, he turns around to a super kick from Rollins, and then Rollins hits the curb stomp. One, two, three. Seth Rollins is your universal champion, and WrestleMania goes off with the Shield celebrating together as Rollins is the universal champion. I mean, what can I say? I feel like I just booked a pretty great WrestleMania. Like, and obviously... I seriously doubt WWE is going to do much of what I just said. I mean, I honestly feel like none of that's going to happen. I feel like it. I mean, they don't have the best track record for booking great stuff. So, WWE, hire me as a writer. That's all I can say. But next up is just a fun little segment to end the video. And it's a few dream matches I would like to see next year at WrestleMania 36. So, a couple of honorable mentions. Alright, so I've got, um, you know, I said Undertaker retires after the AJ Styles match, but what if he doesn't? What if he decides to come back for one more WrestleMania? So, here, here's what I'm thinking for this. So, Lesnar, Brock Lesnar handed Undertaker his first WrestleMania loss. What if Undertaker is able to avenge that loss and go out on top of Lesnar to avenge his first WrestleMania loss. Like, either that or Undertaker and Kane, they're deciding to retire together. But they have one more match at WrestleMania 36. You know, obviously they're they're not going to put on the best match, but it'd be a good moment to have them both go out. Like, you know, Undertaker gets the win, but at the end, like, Undertaker and Kane do their Brothers of Destruction thing, you know, and 
they hug each other, you know, they walk out of the arena, they retire together, you know, it'd be kind of a great little storyline, you know, I mean, but, you know, that's just a couple of honorable mentions, like, or even after the Lesnar match, Undertaker and Kane, like, Kane comes out and celebrates with Undertaker, they still, like, either way, they should retire together, like, it'd be something great to see, but, with that being said, number five, I'm going to say a Braun Strowman John Cena match. And here's what I'm thinking. So at the Royal Rumble, John Cena wins the Universal Championship. Say it's a triple threat Seth Rollins, Baron Corbin, Cena. You know, Corbin or Bobby Lashley or Elias, they could eat the pin. Cena wins his 17th title. So Cena decides that, hey, he goes to Vince, he said, hey, at WrestleMania 36, I plan to retire afterwards. Let me drop the title to the man, like a man of my choosing who I think should be the face of the company. Vince loves Cena, Vince listens. Maybe like this happens. Cena and Strowman, you know, have Braun Strowman just destroy John Cena and send him out, even with a loss. You know, Cena's still a Hall of Famer, you know, and I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be Cena's last match. Maybe Cena just goes full, like, you know, he, he's just he just a part-timer. He shows up every once in a while. Whereas you're building up Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns as guys that can be faces of the company. You know, Rollins, you know, you're building these guys up. But Strowman finally wins his title at WrestleMania in the main event by destroying John Cena. It'd just be a nice little story, you know. I mean, but number four, I would have to say AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio for the WWE Championship. And at this point, AJ is the WWE Champion. Him and Rey, Rey Mysterio say maybe he wins an elimination chamber to become the number one contender. And Rey beats AJ Styles in a very good matchup full of high flying stuff and, you know, all that. Rey beats AJ. And wins the title at WrestleMania, it'd be a great way for Ray to get like one last title run, you know. So like, give him the title, you know. Maybe he holds on to it until SummerSlam drops it to another person that needs to be a star, or you know, you'll see, you can see later on. Um, maybe, maybe it's something else. But number three, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking about this and. What if we had, all right, I'm trying to think what I was doing. Oh, yeah, um, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. And now, look, I understand that we've seen this match before, but what if we had it at WrestleMania, like two shield, like Roman Reigns turns heel on Seth because Seth is more of a natural baby face than a heel. And I wonder how Roman does as a heel. So, I feel like Roman could be one badass heel. So, you know, these two guys just duke it out. And Seth Rollins ends up winning the match because, you know, you're going off the underdog. Like, Seth Rollins, you know, you kind of say he, like, he's kind of talking about how he was always the considered the weak, weak link in the shield. But yet, he was the first one with the title. And then, you know, and then at the same time, you say, like, you know, you have Roman saying he, he started the shield. He was the architect. You know, obviously Rollins did that. He says he was the real architect. And, you know, he's so much better than Rollins. Rollins really was the weak link. You know, you can just have a nice storyline there. Rollins wins against all odds and proves that he was not the weak link. That he was not the underdog. Like, the underdog wins. You know, it'd just be a nice little story. Now, number two, this is a match that I've really been thinking of for a long time. And I'm going off of the story. Triple H runs NXT. What if Triple H decides that he wants to have a match with possibly the, arguably the biggest star to come out of the NXT? The first NXT superstar to come, to come on to the main, obviously not the first, but you understand, like, the first one of that new era of NXT to come on and win the Universal title, and that's Triple H versus Finn Balor. 
And personally, I want to see a program where Triple H ends up, he goes around, he wrestles with, uh, he kind of has matches with any, like, all the NXT call-ups recently and stuff like that. You know, and he kind of has those matches and, you know, he kind of sees what they have because eventually he's taking over. He wants to see who he, he needs to build up as a true star and who he doesn't from NXT. And then Finn Balor wins, and Triple H eventually can build him up as a star. Like, he could be the man in WWE. You know, it's just a thought. So, Finn Balor and Triple H, I feel like that would be a great match. Finn Balor picks up the win over Triple H. And, you know, Triple H has tremendous respect for, ba respect for Balor, as he's really good in the ring. And the number one thing I'm thinking of is... Bring the Money in the Bank ladder match back to WrestleMania. I understand, like, that they have a whole pay-per-view dedicated to it. I feel like you could get rid of that. And, like, if you think about it, one Money in the Bank ladder match winner is always going to overshadow the other. Like, if you think about it. And one Money in the Bank ladder match is always going to be bigger than the other because it's the main event. So why not have just one big Money in the Bank ladder match? You know, either you decide to go six, eight, or ten superstars. You know, three superstars from SmackDown and Raw. Four from each brand or five from each brand depending on what you want to do that year. And imagine like next year, say you've got an eight-man Money in the Bank ladder match. You've got Samoa Joe. Andrade, you know, Randy Orton and, you know, somebody else from SmackDown, maybe a NXT call-up who you've built up on SmackDown. And then on Raw, like, you've got, say you got uh, Ricochet, Dean Ambrose, you know, I mean, stuff like that, you know, stars like that. Imagine you have Samoa Joe win the Money in the Bank and then later on in the night cash in on Ray after he wins the title. How much of a heel and a monster heel Samoa Joe would look like after that. Like, he'd be booed out of the building. You can set up a program, but you at least gave Ray that feel-good moment. But Samoa Joe takes it from him. You know, like, just imagine stuff like that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Again, let me know your thoughts on everything that I just, like, said. I feel like I booked some pretty good stuff, you know. But, yeah. Um, peace out, my homies. See you later.